All right, in this video, I'm gonna give a critique of postmodernism, which is a philosophy that says that, you know, sort of right, wrong behavior is just kind of this social construction based upon your culture, and that there isn't any sort of universal, you know, overarching morals or set of ethics or right, wrong behaviors that we have to follow, okay? It's just truth can be whatever you want it to be. It's just a cultural social construction. So the reason I'm doing this critique is because in my last video when I was talking about fact-checking, I received a comment that assumed I agreed with postmodernism, okay? And I don't, but I wanna clarify exactly where I diverge because I read a short story that sounds very postmodernism. Uh, okay, so what was the short story? Well, the short story was uh, the prince and the magician, and the moral of the story is there is no truth beyond magic. Okay, so that sounds like, you know, truth is sort of this social construction. It sounds very postmoderny. Well, here's, I, I, to be completely honest with you, when I received that comment, and this was several months ago, so I've thought about this a lot and I've read about postmodernism, but I didn't even know what postmodernism was back then, okay? So, um, you know, the, the reason why I liked that story was because when I was younger, I went on this thing called Semester at Sea, okay? And it's where you take a semester in college and you go around the world on a boat. Uh, we stopped in like 10 different uh, countries, 12 different cities, and it was like every other week, you're in a different culture with a different set of customs that wear, you know, these clothes that drive on this side of the road, and it's totally different than the people over here, right? In some cultures, it's okay to have multiple wives, and it's totally normal for them. In other cultures, that's totally taboo, and you're only supposed to have one. Uh, in India, cows walk on the road because they're sacred animals, and nobody's nobody eats them. I'm sure some people do, but the majority of the culture treats them as a sacred animal, they don't eat them. Whereas in the United States, of course, we just eat cows. Not everybody, because some people don't eat meat, but the culture as a whole, you know, does not treat the cow as a sacred animal. So the question is, which of these cultures is right? Okay, is one culture righter than others? Okay, and this is a very interesting question, and it's something I've thought about a lot because of that trip. Right? I visited all these countries one after the other, and when I got home, I literally had a reverse culture shock, where right? I, couldn't, I couldn't recognize my culture as being right. Okay? I just, I'm like, this is like, why do we do it like this? It seems so arbitrary. And so this is a question I've thought about a lot, and that's why I've always loved that story so much, is because you, know, you realize that there are some things that we do are, that are somewhat arbitrary. And, but but when, you, when I came home, everybody that didn't go on the trip was still living in this very rigid box, right? That they, they just think that this is the right way of doing it, and they don't realize that there's people on the other side of the planet that just do things totally different than them. So that's why I like that story. And what I always thought of is that we wanna have many different cultures that are doing totally different things. Like the worst thing we could do is get everybody to conform to one way of life because it would be the end of us. Okay, How, you know, because different cultures have different produce. And I don't just mean fruits and vegetables, but I mean like they produce different exports, different technologies, different furniture, different whatever, because their culture kind of supports that product. Right? And if we were all the same, then we would lose out on a lot, right? So that's sort of what I love about having different cultures. Okay, now then the question becomes, well, is there a culture that is righter than another culture? And this, I get, I get in trouble with people all the time with this because I always say they're just different, but then, like I remember I was on this plane in Mexico and I was debating with the person on the person next to me. We got in this long conversation. He's like, no, some cultures are better than others. And I'm like, no, they're just different, okay? And 
So let me explain why, why I hesitate to say that one culture is better than another, but that doesn't mean that I dismiss it. There's, a, there's sort of a universal code of ethics that we all have to agree upon. Okay, so what I say sounds very postmodern-y, but it's not, okay? So let's start with this example of the psychology experiment. So there's this psychology experiment, you've probably already seen it, but they get these people to watch this video of um, you know these basketball players passing the ball. They say it's very important, you have to count how many times these players pass the ball, and they have the people watch the video, and meanwhile in the audience, there's this dancing gorilla. Okay, I'm sure you've seen the experiment or heard of it. And at the end of the uh, video, they say, did you notice the dancing gorilla? But because the people were so focused on counting how many times the player passed the ball, the majority of the people don't notice the dancing gorilla, right? So people are like, what gorilla? And they rewind it, and they're like, oh my God, how did I miss that? So, why does that happen? Well, it happens because individuals and also cultures, but let's start with the individual now. Individuals have different value hierarchies. Okay, in other words, there's trillions of things that you could focus on in any given moment, and so you have to narrow it down. And so you choose to focus on some things above other things. Some of this is innate, right? Like loud noises will get your attention. If somebody yells into the room and yells fire, it's going to get your attention because you value survival over whatever else you are doing, right? So we all have different value hierarchies in order to navigate ourselves in the world in a way that helps us survive. Okay, now different people value different things. And so if you're, you know, maybe the people that value people watching over counting the, how many times the players pass the ball would notice the dancing gorilla, okay? Because their value hierarchy is constructed where they're more interested in people uh, than the person who's interested in counting the score. So different value hierarchies yield different perceptions. Now the question is, is one of them right? Okay, in the same way that are some cultures more right than others? And here's the thing. On some level, yes, because some value hierarchies don't work. In other words, if the dancing gorilla turned into an attacking gorilla and the person was just counting the score instead of looking around at other people, they would get eaten. And so the person that valued you know, people watching over counting the score would actually be better off in that instance. Okay, and there's all sorts of things. If people value doing, you know, drugs over taking care of themselves and supporting a family and this kind of stuff, that's not gonna work, right? They're gonna end up homeless or they're gonna overdose and die or whatever. So obviously, there's certain behaviors that we have to abide by in order to survive, okay, and different religious traditions and spiritual traditions and whatever, which are basically, if you look at the Bible, it's a collection of stories that impart a certain moral on the listener of the story. So you listen to the story or you read the story and you extract out what's the moral of the story. And you use that to construct your value hierarchy. Oh, this person did this and this and this and it results in this. Well, I should use this moral to help construct a better value hierarchy, okay? And guess what? The stories that survive for thousands of years, like the ones in the Bible or the ones in the Quran or the ones in the Upanishads or any spiritual tradition, the reason why they last for so long is because those stories orient people in a way where they're more apt for survival, okay? So it's not that you take these stories literally and this exact thing happened or whatever. Okay, imagine if the stories we tell today, like, you know, that do have some deep stuff in it, like Star Wars and the Force and, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. There's some deep wisdom in those stories, but we don't take it literally that there's actually a starship that was flying around. Okay, but if you watch that movie, then you extract out a certain ethic, you know, about 
the force and this kind of stuff. And so then that story orients you in a certain way where you are, you know, you're a more effective person. You're better at surviving because your value hierarchy is oriented in a way that works. Okay, so, so let's go back to the psychology experiment where people are watching the, uh, the, foot, the uh, basketball game or the dancing gorilla. So whose perspective is right? Okay, well, at some level, you could say if the dancing gorilla turned into an attacking gorilla, then the per person that was people watching is righter than the person who was counting the score because they were able to get the heck out of there and survive. Okay, but counting the score is also, there's nothing wrong with it. It's important, right? And if you're in a nice stadium with protection from wild animals, then hey, it's fine to count the score. So can you say that one is righter than the other? Well, here's the thing. The way that I see it, and this was the point that I was trying to make in the other video without getting all off on this postmodern bit, the point that I was making is that if you have these two people working together, or they both have a right to exist, then when the attacking gorilla turns, turns into, or the dancing gorilla turns into an attacking gorilla, the person can tap his buddy on the shoulder and say, look, and they can both observe that and they can get the heck out of there. Okay, but you can still have the benefit of one person counting the score and one person watching people, right? So if we allow there to be multiple, and in, in my, the reason I was talking about this in the last video, is by having multiple blockchains, then you can have multiple operating systems on computers or multiple oranges in an orange orchard or multiple uh, varieties of apple or whatever. By having variety, then you gain more perspective, okay? But that does not mean that all of them are equally valid because some are going to die, right? If you, you know, some, some of these blockchains are not going to scale, right? But they all have a right to exist. It's just that some of them aren't gonna work, right? In the same way that I was saying that you wanna have multiple value hierarchies because it's beneficial to have multiple value hierarchies. Imagine if we all valued the exact same thing, right? And so we only produced the exact same thing. We all produce pillows. Okay, well, who's gonna build the computers and who's gonna build the furniture and who's gonna, right? Like the reason an economy works is because people value differently, right? That's the only reason you have exchange and trading of goods. If everybody had the exact same value hierarchy, they'd all want the exact same thing, they'd all live in the exact same house, the exact same clothes, it'd be like, you know, we'd all be clones because we all are the same. So the only reason economies can work is because people value different things, okay? And so we don't want everybody to be the exact same because it'd be the end of us. It would make us all poorer because we wouldn't have trade there wouldn't be any growth so that that was really the point that i was making is that we want to have multiple things but that does not mean that i think that all of them are going to survive okay some of them are going to fail they're not going to scale okay maybe that's even ethereum okay i know most of my subscribers are from that but ethereum could very well fail uh, maybe a different blockchain like bitcoin SV or whatever will scale better so I'm completely, you know, even like with my own, I, I'm an American citizen. I follow the rules in the United States and here in California and all this kind of stuff. But my mind, especially from all the travel when I was younger, is so blown open that I have a very hard time totally committing to one thing, right? I'm always like, well, maybe this isn't exactly right. Now, one other story that I want to... Uh, one other story that I want to talk about is from Joseph Campbell, right? So this guy, uh, he, I remember watching this interview with him where he was talking about how in tribal cultures they had these uh, this ritual where every time they had to discipline the children, okay, so they're instilling a certain ethic in them, a certain right, wrong behavior, they'd wear these really spooky masks and they'd come and they'd instill in it. Okay, now when these children came of age, 
they would do this ritual where they'd take off the mask. It was like a rite of passage. They'd take off the mask and they'd put it on uh, the children who are now adults, right? So what did that symbolize? Well, what it was symbolizing is that this disciplinary, this, you know, this thing that was enforcing a set of rules on somebody, you know, it was flexible. And now I'm taking it off of you and now you're in charge of setting those rules. Okay, now, again, all cultures, it's like what we were talking about, they're all very somewhat arbitrary, but that doesn't mean they're all gonna survive, right? We've seen it time and time again where, you know, somebody will try and make a centrally planned economy and it collapses on itself. So that clearly is not the right set of ethics to instill upon somebody or on a civilization. Whereas free markets and sort of, you know, allowing capitalism and private ownership works a lot better, okay? It's not without its faults, but it's the best system we have so far. And so, as the rulers, the person who's setting sort of the rules, you know, and of course in the United States, we don't have a ruler, but we have, you know, several different components of our government. But as, as the rulers, the people that are creating the rules, um, they can either create rules that work or don't. Okay, now if they create ones that work, then we're gonna have a prosperous, prosperous society. And if they create ones that don't, we're not. But those rules are still very flexible. Like, does it really matter if we drive on the left side of the road or the right side of the road? Okay, does it matter if we're all vegans or can we eat some meat? Okay, there's actually this culture I went to in India as it's Gujarat, I think it's a state, but it's one of the most vegetarian states because back in the day, the Jain religion, they only, they followed a very strict vegan diet. So they would only eat, uh, you know, vegetables and fruits that grew on the plant above ground. They wouldn't eat the potatoes because you had to kill the plant to get it, right? So it's interesting. And if you look at their culture, it, they have beautiful temples and they have this really amazing set of knowledge that they, you know, uh, passed on because that culture produces certain things. But if another culture wants to eat meat because they're in a really cold place and that's the only food source they have, then maybe that's what's right for them. So it's very difficult to say that there should be one universal set of ethics. Okay, that's that to me is not a good thing. It's like whenever I play the game Civilization, I think that they should get rid of the world domination as being winning, right? Because if we all were exactly the same, we would be, it'd be the end of us because you wouldn't have anybody to trade with. You wouldn't have any new ideas. You wouldn't have an opposite um, that counterbalanced you. So that doesn't make me a postmodernist though. So I want there to be multiple cultures. So here, here's the best way and then I'm gonna end this. So if you're, this is the best way of describing this. Imagine you had, um, or you're a developer, maybe, maybe you aren't, but let's say that you're a computer programmer and you wanna program an app on iOS. Well, you can create pretty much any app that you can dream of. It could be a game, it could be a productivity app, it could be a social network, whatever but you're still agreeing to the operating system's rules. So there's seemingly endless things that you can create, but you still have to agree to this base operating system. And so that's sort of how I see this universal sort of truth or universal law, right? There's certain things that you can't do as humans. You can't jump off a roof and expect to fly up. Okay, I guess if you have a parachute or a, a uh, glider, then maybe, but you know, you can't drink chlorine bleach and expect to survive. Okay, there's certain rules that we have to abide by. Okay, but within that, we have tremendous flexibility. And it's good that people choose different things because with different value hierarchies, then you actually have something that you could exchange. Okay, and you can grow and have new ideas. 
So it's like on, an, on the iPhone with iOS, you have all these different apps because people have different ideas and they want to create different things versus if we had a very strict universal truth, there would only be one app, okay? And so that's not good. That would be very boring and you would just have all apps are exactly the same, okay? That's not what we want. What we want is this very abstract base that supports all of this different expression, right? So anyways, that's my, uh, that's my critique of postmodernism. So obviously if you travel around, you find out that there's very different arbitrary, seemingly arbitrary ways of uh, living in this world, but some of them will not work. Right? There's some things that if you do certain behaviors, you will die. And there's some things that if you do these behaviors, you'll thrive. And so my critique of postmodernism is that you know, our, our ways of life are not infinitely malleable. They are within certain constraints. In the same way that if you're making an application on iOS, you can make all sorts of different things, but you're still agreeing to the constraints of the operating system. Okay, you can't just do anything, but you can do a lot of things. And so that's where I disagree with postmodernism in the sense that they say that there's no restrictions. Well, there are restrictions, but they're just very flexible restrictions. And I encourage, but and the reason why I get that person confused me with somebody who agrees with postmodernism is because I encourage there to be many different expressions. Right? I don't want everybody to be the same because if everybody was the same, then we would, it would it'd be the end of us. We'd look like those sketchings of uh, gray aliens. We'd all be exactly the same. You know, It didn't matter who you were attracted to because everybody's the same. Uh, it didn't matter who you'd mate with because they're all gonna look the same anyways. Actually, I think in those sketches, the people, gray aliens, I guess, don't produce they just clone themselves in a pod or something. So, and I obviously don't, I've never seen a gray alien, so don't worry. I'm, I'm, I think it's just kind of imagination, but it's a good point, right? It's like, imagine if everybody was the same, it'd be very, very boring. So you wanna have different expressions of people, different expressions of oranges and fruit and apples. You wanna have different expressions of culture and people right? You want to have different applications. You want to have different operating systems. You want to have all these different things uh, because with diversity, then you actually have a foundation where you can trade and there can be life and growth and further expansion. All right. So anyways, that is uh, the end of this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in another one. Bye.